This is the editing breakdown of my Christmas B-roll. So just two days ago, I uploaded a Christmas B-roll. If you haven't seen that one, I leave a link right here, I think, or here. And my goal today is that you leave this video with a little bit more knowledge than when you came here. So without further ado, let's jump into Adobe Premiere. All right, here we are in Adobe Premiere, and this is what my timeline looks like. Just as a quick refresher, I'm going to play through the timeline once. Let's jump into the first scene, shall we? So if you saw the behind the scenes, you would know that I filmed this completely stationary and then I had my girlfriend twist this button to turn on the stove. And then what I did with the position tool, I basically keyframed it to follow the number one or number two or whatever. So it's following this as it turns. Uh, so you can see all these keyframes I have. Uh, basically, these are just uh, keyframes, position and rotation. So all these keyframes are just following the one and the two. Uh, this clip also contains two masks. And if we look right here, I have one mask that is just a circle. And this mask fits the button perfectly. And then I have one mask that covers the complete image, as you can see here. It's tracking this as it spins around and then it goes straight into the bottle and then disappears. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to reveal the bottle very early in this clip so you would know where to look. Right here you can start to see on the thumb, you can already start to see the outline of the bottle. And I thought that merged into the next scene quite nicely instead of just having a full opacity mask. So as we go through here, you can see that the bottle starts to show already. On our next clip here, I also have a bunch of positional keyframes in the beginning. And these are just here to make sure that the bottle lines up with the button. Because obviously it didn't when I filmed it, but with a lot of keyframing, you can see it's jumping around quite a bit. With a lot of keyframing, it you, I can line it up perfectly with the bottom. With a lot of positional keyframing and scaling, I can line up the bottle perfectly with the button. So as you can see, they are perfectly lined up with each other. As soon as we go into this next scene of my girlfriend pulling up the bottle, I immediately zoom out on the keyframes. And right here, we revert back to normal. And then this is just a simple speed ramp, 20% of original speed. And then right here when my girlfriend is about to twist the bottle, we have a very strong scale in. So it goes from here into here and that's just because the next scene also starts with a scale in. And then the next scene also have a key framing and it starts with a scale in. This scene is nothing special really, uh, just some simple scale in for the transition. And then I scaled out and I kinda tracked the bottle a little bit more. I gave this a little bit more of a motion. And the next scene we just have a hard cut into this scene. And this scene actually has no keyframing at all, which is quite unusual. Uh, just a Lumetri color. Our next scene, we have my girlfriend who reaches for the cup and then pulls it up and then puts it down. And of course I have a speed ramp here. We have 100% here and then we have a small slow in into 20%. And right here we go up to 112%. I did add some blur right here, 
in the transition. So right here you can see I used a directional blur just straight down and I keyframed it up to 28 and let's see 48. So right here is quite a lot of blur and that's because I did the same on the next scene to make the transition very smooth. So the next scene I'm coming down from the top down here and my girlfriend pours the glug up into a glass or a cup and I also have the directional blur in the beginning here just to smooth them out a little bit more and uh, yeah a speed ramp uh, of course a speed ramp always speed ramps and right here we have the same zoom transition which is basically just a scale keyframing that gets more and more steep so it doesn't go very fast here but then here it zooms in a lot and that's because the next scene is a close-up and we have the same scale animation here uh, so it starts with a scale in and then this goes pretty deep because I wanted to fill the entire frame with black I actually added two color mats here that are black as you can see without this it's uh, it's quite harsh so this is the next scene and without these black color mats, I mean, the transition is quite evident. So I just added these with some opacity. But yeah, right about, let's see, right about here, they start to fade in. So we kind of get this darkness around the whole bubble. And then here is the transition. Can you see it? It's actually quite nice. Of course, this starts very scaled in 183 and that is because, well, I wanted to cover a lot of the frame, but because I was using a wide angle lens, I couldn't really cover a lot of the screen. So I just scaled it in because I wanted the transition to be from black to black. And then here there are some keyframing, uh, positional and scale out because right here I didn't want to be this zoomed in. I needed to zoom in for the transition, but then right here I didn't really want to be that zoomed in because I wanted to show the mix of the almonds and the raisins down under here. So I scale out and I use the position tool as well to kind of keep this almost in the center because the spoon is what's important here. And we go forward and then right here we are almost fully scaled out, 108. So almost fully scaled out. And then here we have a speed ramp. And my girlfriend drops the racings and the almonds down. And then we keep going. And right here you can see that I have drawn a mask that starts right here I think, yes. So the same principle here with the other two masks of the bottle and the button. I have two masks. One mask is uh, the circle or the ear, the handle of the cup. And one mask is basically this area. Yeah, so I can control it with opacity. And then right here you can see that starting to see a little bit of the next scene. And right when you start to see a little bit of the next scene, I also have a very fast scale in position. So we go through here and here the scale in starts to ramp up. And of course I track the mask with the ear. So for every time the ear gets bigger, the masks also follow. And then right here is the last frame of the cup. And here we have this scene. And if you've seen the behind the scenes, you know how I did this. Uh, I filmed this in 120 FPS, which means it goes quite fast here. But then right here we start to slow down, just when it gets a little bit sharp. And right here we go down to 37%. Right, I didn't go down to 20%. I could have gone slower, but I thought this was just a little bit smoother. For this scene I also added a light smoke which I tracked to the mug so as you can see 
it's barely visible right here because I wanted the opacity to be very low here. It's only 12%. I didn't want it to look unnatural. I wanted you to almost like almost not see it. But then right here it goes up to 19% and yeah, you can see it right here. So I just tracked it to the position of the mug. And yeah, it looks pretty nice. There are some real smoke here as well, but it doesn't look as good as this. And uh, that was it. And then of course I added all the sound effects as you can see down here. And uh, But there is nothing special about the sound effects. I just went into Epidemic Sounds and I tried to find something that, well, fit and then I just made it. But I hope you had some idea of what kind of amount of work goes into this and yeah, I hope you learned something. And if you did, leave a like, tell me. I'm very happy to hear if I have helped you in any way. And with that being said, I'd just like to say for you to take care of yourself and be nice because Santa is coming to town very soon. So take care.